Okay, chapter one, your physics coach. Let's look at some examples and we'll work our way up to the text exercises and with solutions in the back. And as Lori pointed out, there's occasionally there's just things that mess with our head, really. And that's good. We'll, we'll straighten them out with this notation. Otherwise, they we just feel like, oh, I can't do this. Um, so we're doing for most of the book through chapter six, because once you get this approach and this way of thinking and this way of encoding the the physics, the process into mathematics, and then looking at the math and have it make you think about the physics. Once you get this, you're rolling, because you've got that, and then you can continue learning, but this is the biggest hump. So one through six is about describing motion. It's really quite profound um, and challenging. Chapter seven through, really seven and eight primarily, are about the forces or force analysis, the forces that cause acceleration. And so I think those will be very, very helpful for you as well. So we're trying to now, instead of jumping to equations, what we're going to do is think about, imagine a video and pause that video at certain instants. Those will be times that we want to calculate something about. We want to know something. So we're going to know some things about it and we're going to find other things. That's the puzzle, that's the game. And that's often, that's a good framework for, for work in general. Okay, so for example, let's give it a shot. Um, let's say, now I, we're going to have, let me put up a couple of, a couple of things. When we're talking about motion, for starters, you know, we stick with uh, basic examples to build this up, and then you can build up from there. So we're gonna talk about one-dimensional motion, which means you go one way and then the other way along a line. That could be horizontal, it could be vertical, it could be along a ramp, and a ramp turns out to be very useful in all fields, lots of things. A screw is actually a curved ramp. So uh, it's, it's more powerful than it seems, okay? So one dimensional motion is just along a line, forward and backward, but which way is forward? Whichever way you choose. So let me write down the concepts and then what we wanna put on these and then we'll start in. If you've seen this, then this will all kind of make sense and we can really pinpoint some of these things. So we're doing kinematics. Let me know if you can't see something. Kinematics means we are keeping track of times and you know how I know, use the notation. So instance of time. Let's see if I can get that up there, all right. And we are, sorry, I'm recording while I do this. Now, in textbooks, as you've probably read, I'm not sure how good this is going to be. Do that. The T in textbooks often means delta T, a change in time. So I talk about time, you know, earlier time and later time in general. And then I talk about a change in time from earlier to later, which means three lines, time later, oops, minus time earlier. I'm not gonna go into this too much. So let me, let me just do this kind of quickly because we've done it. If you wanna get specific, you could say time two and time whatever, four. And so the change in time from two to four is by definition time four minus time two. So we're gonna have a process and we're gonna pause it at time one, time two, time three, time four, and we can relate those. Okay, so for kinematics, we deal with time. I'm just gonna put this over here, T and delta T, specific ones with good notation. Then we deal with position. 
Now, position, we can talk about x. So don't use x for anything other than position right now. Okay, x is position. We can also use y, and we can use z. Often we use y for vertical, but it doesn't have to be. So two, we can use particular positions earlier and later. And so the change in position called displacement is this, as you know. So I'm going to jump into this pretty fast. So we've got some position and some change in position. And at some particular time or state, and then earlier to later, earlier to later. Now, this is going to be helpful. So, you know, I know you get this, right? So we can also have velocities at any particular time. So like which velocity? And we can have accelerations. But generally, our accelerators, it can be, that gets a little tricky, but we're going to keep it kind of simple so don't get hung up on that. But this is what kinematics is, keeping track of the motion here. And, of course, we can have a change in velocity as well. So we're trying to run, we've got words that describe a process. And our challenge is to, to draw a picture. Sometimes it's drawn for us. So we're going to want a sketch the process or the movie. We want to show the key states, as you know. That means you pause. Where do you pause the video? Let me just put it here because I want to use that room. Pause. We're going to label those instants or states. One, two, three, in sequence. And I'll leave that, you know, I'm not going to redo the whole book for you because I know you're there, but we'll, we'll get there. This is just to prep you. Okay. There could be equal time between these. That's called a strobe. There could be different time between each time you pause it. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Don't, uh, don't make assumptions. Just read about it. And you cannot learn physics without doing problems. And the other one is you need to choose and show. Anyone know what else, what the third one is? Third key to sketching this? States. Got the states is definitely one. Um, Variables. Yes. So I'm going to put the variables in with labeling the states. So when I label the states, I'm going to say and variables, just like we did here. T1, T2, T3, X1, X2, X3, V1, V2, V3, because that's the part that confuses people. And if your algebra is weak, you'll, get, you'll, you'll work that up, but the algebra is whatever. Getting it down into the equation is the hard part, and it really is, but you can get it. The last one is, oh, you can do that here, is choose and show coordinates. So for example, I can have this be the plus x direction. I could have this be the plus x direction. I could have this be the plus x direction, and you've seen that. So it's really critical. And plus x, again, we get we got kind of trained, like x is always to our right, but that's that does positive doesn't have to be to the right, it can be to the left. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do an example and start, start doing this. As we do it, though, we will occasionally, we'll have questions and we'll get stuck, as Laurie mentioned. And so there, what's going to happen is your question will be very insightful, very much tied to a, a, just a really deep, good question. And that's where a lot of learning comes from. That's where your professor comes, from, comes in and I come in or... Or so on. Sometimes you just need, like I remember, uh, I did not, the idea of negative energy did not make sense to me. It did not, and I worked with my professor, or my TA actually, for like 45 minutes. He said all the right things. I just, I just, it wouldn't, I had this preconception. And then it was like, oh, I had to get over that preconception. So we've got those things. So let's do a process. All right. So. This is what we're doing in, in chapter one, and a lot of it, 
I mean, a lot. So we, we're not doing baby stuff. A lot of prep courses, they just do, well, let's just do baby physics. No, let's do it full on. And so, for example, I could say, I start walking. Now, there's two things, guys. Here's, and Lori, Lori, are you there? Lori? Yes, I'm yeah. here. Okay, so this is getting at what you're saying. And this is, and this confuses people. I could start walking from rest. So the video could be on like it is. And then I go. Or I could say, close your eyes, pretend you're close, keep them open. Pretend you're closing your eyes and then start the video while I'm already walking. So I could be in motion at state one. Or I could stop. I could be in motion and stop. So let's say, I'll just call it out. State one, state two, state three, state four, because I did stand here for a while. Time is still ticking, right? I'm getting older. State five, whatever, still just here. State six, I take off. State seven. So um, this is, like I say, this is going to help you with a lot of these problems. So let's say I start if I say from rest, and I move to the left two steps. So here I am. You can put a one here, you can put a one here. I start, and then I move two steps. I'm gonna go like this and just make increments. And then I'm gonna go over here and say, state two. And I say, I'm still walking, and I walk three more steps to the left. One, two, and then I'm state three over here. And I turn around. So I go one, two, three, four, five. To turn around, what do I have to do? What do you have to do if you're walking turn. one direction and you're going to turn around, but you have to stay on that line? You can't curve. It's got to be one dimensional. You change direction. Yeah, but what do you have to do? You have you, to stop first, right? You got to stop, right? You can't. You know, if you if you're curving, then fine. But if you're on one dimensional, in order to go back the other way, I got to stop and go back. So there's a lot implied in the wording, and this is cool. It's very doable, guys. If you're just trying to memorize all the symbols, you're gonna, it's going to freak you out. Um, and it would, you know, me too. So it's, so I'm going to go, okay. I started from, I, I can tell by the numbers that I went like this. And now, annotate, as Lori says, um, these. And I can say, okay, hmm, what do I got? I got time one which could be anything if your stopwatch was running. I don't know, but if you just started your stopwatch there, you'd say zero. Uh, position, position one. Now, I don't know. How come I don't know what position my position is? because you don't have the, um, the axis. Yeah, I haven't chosen my origin yet. So, you know, if you want zero to be here, fine. If you want zero to be here, and that's positive, if zero is over here, and that's positive, then it's like positive. If zero is over here, and that's positive, and I don't, you know, I just have to set up my, it doesn't matter though, right? Because if you if I'm walking and, and then you if someone's walking past you and you change the coordinate system on them they don't care <laughs> it's like hey I just changed the coordinate now you're walking negative uh, it, this is just your way of keeping track so it doesn't matter in fact you'll see for me uh, position is it, it's not really a physical number you you get to choose but displacement is so I'm just gonna write that. And then, I don't know, T2, X2, T3, X3. So I've got 
time positions, and then I've got the change in each of these between any earlier and any later state, okay? And then I've got some velocity. Uh, V1, V2, V3. Now, the game is that we throw out these puzzles as a training regimen where we'll give you some information, we'll give you some, and you find the others. That's the whole thing all throughout, you know, physics, engineering, biology, all this stuff, you know. And, and really in, in real work too. So what do I know on that list right now? You know that in the first state, the... I was zero, right? Right, it was zero. And then what else do I know when I described it? I said I turned it around, right? So yeah, it's a stop to turn around. And this is really hard. So it's supposed to be hard, though. It's hard to keep it all in your head, and you should not. Even if you're good at this stuff, that is a weakness that humans fall into and did philosophically, too. You turn it around, so you might make a little note, because you're just trying to keep... Think of it as a puzzle. You don't throw the pieces on the page and just look at them. Or on the desktop, sorry. You move them around. That's what you're doing. You're just sorting it out. That is where the physics comes up. That is where learning and it requires the physics. Once you do that, it's easier. So that's cool, but we need practice and you got lots of practice. Okay, so that's what we're doing. There's also acceleration. We're gonna leave that for right now. Okay, so I can, again, I can choose my coordinate system any way I want. I've got key states one, two, three. I've labeled the variables with subscripts. I don't have initial and final. That is, oh, that's the devil. <laughs> it's, when, that's one of the things that got me into teaching is I had friends or people that I would tutor that would drop out. And part of it is that initial and final really confused them. I mean, they weren't even aware of it, but in textbooks do this. so. Uh, John, yes. I have a quick question. I remember uh, when I was reading the text, there, there was one point it said, that, oh, if you're moving, you stop. The very moment you stop, your velocity is not zero, but your, but your velocity right before you stop. You're moving and you stop. The very moment you stop, your um, velocity is not zero, but the velocity uh, right before you stop. Right before you stop, it isn't. So, and this gets at a, a, something that is, uh, in, in, when you know this stuff and you start doing it, sometimes you don't think about it, but when you teach about it and you, and you watch people, and that's a great thing about community colleges, we tend to work with people and see how they think and, and stuff comes up and you don't even realize that you unconsciously decided these things. Uh, this idea of an instant is profound. Uh, you, you even see it in philosophy. People get confused by an instant. So if I'm stopping, I've got to slow down. There is an instant where I am stopped. Now, there are two types of stopping. There is, uh, you know, you got to slow down. Whichever way you're going, you got to slow down, decrease speed. Stop. I can stop, hang out have an espresso, and then go. Or I can stop for an instant. And so you have to know which of those it is. Am I going to stay stopped for a time interval? Or is it literally at an instant? When a ball bounces, it compresses. But it doesn't compress unless it sticks. It doesn't compress and just stop there. It compresses and stops, but only for an instant. So it's decreasing speed, stop increasing speed. So, so even in this process, the moment it touches my hands, it starts decreasing speed, stop increasing speed, release. And uh, that'll get you through a lot of, that, that, caught, that messes with you. And it's a good question. It's a very insightful question. Does that kind of get at that a little bit? 
Um, so in this case, um, this person is going back, right? So the instant, the velocity at three, at, at uh, V3 is zero. Um, but if the person actually stopped, then um, V3 is not zero. Okay, so so let's, and we can make all these up. And that's why I did, I did all these things. So turn around. So what does that mean? How do I do it? So we can make up this example. We could say uh, stop and have tea or coffee, whatever you want. So if you stop and have tea, and I think this gets at the problem, the question you were saying, the time is still ticking. You know, you can pause a video and you could say, boom, that's an instant, a snapshot but they could still be moving, right? You take a picture of me like this, you don't know if I'm running or not, right? I could just be posing, right? So it looks like I'm running, but if you press play and I'm still doing this, then you go, oh, he's just faking it. And this is huge. It, it, it seems trivial, but this, these are the things that really mess you up and you go, I can't do physics. So if I stop and have T, then I'm gonna have to do this. Let me use another color. Then I'd have to go, okay, then there's a T4. And if I just stop, then x3 is equal to x4, because I'm right here still. And also, v4 would be 0, because I'm having my t. Now, my velocity can be 0, and I'm sitting there. Or my velocity can be 0 right when I start. But i got to start from 0. So that's a, that's a really... Uh, kind of a, a challenging thing. When you're at a stoplight, you're sitting there, your velocity is zero. But there's an instant where you're starting, but you have to start from zero. You can't just instantly have something else, unless you're doing quantum mechanics. So you just, you start. So you gotta ramp up from zero. So you had T, T3, T, and then you're taking off again. And then let's just go whatever. Let's do this. Then the next time, then you know you you look or whatever, and then you pause the video. And we got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Let's just go over here. State four is can you guys see that? Yeah. Can you see this? Is that okay? So state four. So if I show you that. If I just show you dots, you don't know how it went. If I just show you snapshots, you don't know how to put the snapshots in order, right? You can get this. It's just, it makes a lot of sense, but also don't underestimate it. So if I know this, I go, oh, I go, I was here, then here, or someone was there, there, oops, there. So this was, this is four, right? And when I write it down, I catch my mistakes. Because I said I stopped and had T. Oh, so that's got to be 5. So I've got to count the time that I was just standing still. Unless you stop for an instant, then that's OK, too. Again, if you come in and you stop for an instant, and then compress, decrease speed, stop, expand, increase speed. That's a super important concept in engineering and biology. Okay. Or stop and have T. Then you've got to keep track of it. If you're still in the same position, but I still want to keep track of the three and the four, because this is T time, and then with there. Now, if I just saw this as well, I wouldn't know. You know. This is one, this is two. I don't know what happened from one to two. Right? They could have gone like, done all, you know, you got to stay on a line. So right now, I don't know what could have happened. But if you tell me that they went straight from one to two and straight from two to three, and had T, 
and then straight to five, then I'm good. Then I know that they went straight. Now, what I don't know, unless I watch the video, is I don't know if you went from one to two and stopped in there or slowed down. If you said straight, then I know you okay didn't turn around. But I don't know if you kept the same speed, so you have to tell me. You have to tell me what happened. Did, did you increase speed? Then I got an acceleration. Did you decrease speed? Then I got an acceleration. And we'll tell you that in the puzzle. It'll be encoded in the words, though. So here, I'm going to go from 1 to 2. And again, I could say, I can't have a constant speed because I start at 0. So there's got to be some place where I increase my speed. Then I could keep the same speed. But then I've got to decrease my speed. And then I got to have t. And then I got to increase my speed. And then I can keep the same speed. Or I can go faster or slower or whatever. And I don't know what's happening at five. So it stayed five. I haven't told you. But let me, let me, so I'm just making it up. But it's a different process. So I'll say that at state five, they continue. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, though, is add a little information and show it. This is what you're training to do. This is sadly what books don't have the time. And so what happens is people, when you know something, it's really hard to break things down because it seems, you know, clear to you. Uh, that's, that's part of it. And the other is there's so much to learn. But you could do it. I can put an arrow on here to the right. And that can tell me that I'm still moving, and I'll call it V5. So now that's a different, I could have stopped, right? What anything could be true. I could have been, this person, if this is me or whatever, at state five could have actually already stopped and could be going that way. Anything could be happening. Stop me if anything doesn't make sense, you guys. You gotta, this is entirely for you. But I'm saying that at T5 and at position 5, there's velocity 5, which I often put an arrow next to it. Now, states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I can see at least the sequence of the process. And that's going to, again, draw you into physics, and you're going to learn physics. You're going to be aware of subtleties, and you're going to hit the wall on some of these great questions like Lori's asking here. Okay, so, so now what? Well, it depends. I, I've got my states. I've got my some of the variables. This is kinematics, time, position, velocity, also acceleration, which I'm not layering in here, and that's it. So you do it over and over and over throughout these, and you're going to get used to it. Now, when you come back to chapter one, it's going to seem easier. And, and so you got to keep on going forward. Trust me on that. Try to keep, try to keep at least a, a section a day pace. And some of the short sections, try to do two sections a day. Do not try to do it all in one day. I cannot tell you enough if you haven't learn this yet you will particularly when you get hard stuff but the learning compounds if you do something every day it's part of our uh, physical brain we literally grow connections it's like scratching yourself if you scratch it one day and you wait a month and then scratch it or you wait a week and scratch it the scratch is going to go away but if you scratch it every day you got a tattoo so whatever <laughs> you know so um so now I can give you numbers, but what, notice what we've done. We've done something very different than most physics classes. We haven't put in numbers. We haven't jumped to equations. We're thinking about and visualizing and encoding or annotating the, the variables, the motion. And if you got that, it's gonna, it, things just fall out. But you'll also see where you're making assumptions. So you got to read again and say, wait, did they have T or not have T? Okay, so what I have not done is my coordinates. Now you often don't have to say where X is equal to zero. Let's watch this. 
no matter where x is 0, and no matter which way is positive, positive is a choice, I, you and I would agree that this object went two, we could call it meters. A step really is kind of like half a meter. A long step is a meter. That'd be a long step. So really, your steps are probably about half a meter. So maybe they went one meter to the left. We'd all agree. Delta x from one to two is about one meter. Does everybody agree with that? But I don't know if it's positive. So I'd say delta x, one to two, is equal to uh, left one meter. You have to choose whether left is positive or negative. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent. Sometimes there are reasons why you go, ah, eh, it makes sense. If, if you never turn around, make that positive, right? So I don't know. And I like to, you know, in this case, why would I choose that to be positive when I'm mostly going this way? I don't know. Who, who knows? Who cares? I'm going to choose left. If I choose left to be positive, then my displacement from one to two is positive one meter. So this is half a meter, half a meter. My displacement from two to three is one to three halves of a meter, right? Positive because of my choice. Left is physical, positive is not. Positive is a choice. Three to four at zero, delta x is zero, because I'm staying there. Interesting. Delta x three to five is the same as delta x four to five, because they're the same. And I can put it into my notation. And to Rocio's point two, Textbooks are going to be weaker this way. So you can just go ahead and use this notation for yourself to keep track. It's going to serve you. Um, it's a larger mission, as I say, connecting with some people to, to maybe encode this and make an advance here. But, um, but it will really help because when you write all the letters, you start losing track of what they mean. And very easily, you know, unless you keep track of them. Once you keep track of them, you go, what's that? And you're going to lose it. You're going to go, oh, oh, yeah, that goes over here on my picture. Oh, yeah, that's what's happening. Oh, I forgot to put this in here. That's what you're doing. And you're making it easier. Uh, so I can also say uh, from four to five, my delta x would be one half, one, one and a half, two, <laughs> I can do it, two and a half, three, three and a half to the right, three and a half meters to the right, which I've called negative. So then I could do things like, okay, delta x three to five. Now, so notice this, I could write this out, x five minus x three. If I have those numbers, but I can also just look and count it. Negative, because of this, five half meters. And I can also do things like, this is the thing that confuses us. Hey, good luck trying to remember this. But if you write it down, you're keeping it all straight. I'm going to tell you something that's kind of interesting. Back in the day when I was a student, a grad student, I remember hearing about a study. I haven't found it yet. I'd like to find it. That, that said uh, physicists are the slowest readers. And I'll tell you, my experience was, when I got done with grad school, I literally had to train my, I'm, I'm not kidding, I consciously had to train my eyes to go left to right to read. 
because I spent so much time going like this. I swear, it's a puzzle. I'm doing a puzzle. I'm not reading, I'm doing a puzzle. Oh, there's that piece, there's a corner, here's, a, here's the edge, there's a blue one, here's, oh yeah, there's a, here's a window, right? It's cool, but, you know, in, in grad school, you start, your life is just whatever you're doing, but, um, so, so you kind of do that, you're keeping track of it, and you're always checking yourself. You're not just plugging in, you're thinking about process. You're annotating process. And so, um, so and, and it's again going to pull you into places where your question is going to be questions that people um, have, confusions that are natural. There are really natural confusions. So before I kind of go into that, um, and I know you guys might need to go, but um, any questions? Um, how uh, how come it's not like um, x5 minus x3 is not um, x or 2 meters or oh. negative 2 meters? So I am, and, and this is good, and I... There's tons of examples. So I'm calling a step a half a meter. And I did that just oh, to... Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot that you made that half a meter. My bad. And no, not... See, this is... that When we do this, it's really good. So, and, and Ryan, and, and when, you, when you guys say stuff, it either catches my mistake, because there's a lot of pieces here, um, it... Or it may you know, just catch something that wasn't written down. Um, or, you know, or you just missed, you know, I don't know, you sneezed or, <laughs> you know, your brain, well, that happens, right? You just like, you go, oh yeah, I got to get gas or I, who knows what, you know? So, um, and so that's why we write it down so much. And sometimes we'll think that and then we look and we remember, oh, look how well I've written it down, I can check. But I never, I didn't say that. In fact, you caught something in my, when I was doing this, I was saying I should write that down, and I didn't. So you caught me that this is, I didn't say, because often we'll do one meter increments. And I often do that in the book, but I just thought, you know, really, a step is more like half a meter. You know, that's, that's more like a step right there, you know? I don't, I don't usually take these long steps, you know what I'm saying? I guess if you want to be cool, you can do that, but it's like, uh, so, yeah, and then from, I go from five to three, now in this case, I don't know what the positions are, because I haven't set where zero is, notice that that will change, if, for example, let's just play with it. Now, oftentimes we take the starting point as zero. That's fine. It does. There's no physical meaning, though. Check this out. What if I do this? What if I say x2 is zero? Then what is x1? Zero. Right. Remembering that I'm choosing, this is a choice. If x2 is zero, what's x1? Which way is it, right or left? Right. And we all agree with that, right? Cool. X1 is to the right of X2. My choice makes that negative or positive? Negative. Negative, but, but only because of that. And if I don't write that down, I'm going to forget. I personally would choose that because mostly I'm going that way, so I'll make it positive. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent, because if your negative is the same physical meaning as my positive, then we get to agree, which doesn't happen these days politically very much, but one can only hope. So, then I would say that that is negative one half, two halves, or negative one meter. And this would be one, two, three halves, positive three halves of a meter. Now, generally, decimal places show precision a little more, but I'm just doing this. And then x 
5 would be what? What would x5 be? Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 1. Two. Negative 2 meters, right? But if I shift my coordinates, all these numbers change. But the physics hasn't changed. And so oftentimes, you'll see how I write my, you're going to get to constant acceleration equations. I write them a way that most books don't. Some have started to. I write them with delta, because I really just care about how much I changed. I don't, you know, you could ask yourself, what's my position right now? I, as a number, I don't know, I'm right here. Or you're there, or whatever, like groundhog is there. Or whatever that thing is, porcupine, <laughs> for me. Um, so if I changed it, right? I could flip this, I could flip my coordinates, I could change my origin, but I'm still gonna get the same delta axis. And then time, whatever, and then if you give me the times, I can find delta x, some earlier, any earlier to any later, over delta time, that same earlier to any later, and what's that defined as? What's displacement over time defined as? Haha, -ha, you might not know that. That's chapter three. Average velocity. V average, and I'm gonna write it earlier to later. But when I apply it, so in general I'll say earlier to later, but when I apply it, I wanna say three to five, one to two. I I <laughs> it's good. It makes things so much easier if you do your preparation. It's like painting something, a house. You don't prep it well, go ahead and paint it. It's going to peel off. Do this preparation. Once you get the hang of all of physics, it gets easier. And engineering. Um, I had a question. Yes. Uh, do you have to label all of this stuff for every problem? Or you really... Uh, I, I, yeah, it's a good question. I'm glad you ask. I'm glad you guys ask anything because um, I, it's. Think of it. If you think of it as a training, then you do it on the basic stuff so that you can do it on the hard stuff, right? So any athlete, any the the really good athletes, they put in extra time, and they train as though they're in you know, a game or whatever situation. True with uh, musicians too. So that's where the mental kind of grit uh, comes in. And when you do it, and, 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 and you don't know necessarily, because this is a totally new game to you, so you, you know, when you're, you're joining the team and I'm, I'm, you gotta trust the coach and just say, okay, you know, I hope this guy knows what he's talking about because I don't wanna waste my time. <laughs> Uh, and I get that, but uh, but I'll tell you I do. Um, so I, I have seen the transformation, and it is amazing. So people can can resist because it's a lot. If you tend to write sloppy, uh, you know I can write neat. Think of it, your profet. You want to be engineer? No one wants to see all these scribbles. I mean, you know, you got to lay it out there. Um, so. I mean, it doesn't have to be super neat. Some of you guys write like typewriters, and that makes me super jealous. But, uh, you know, lay it out clearly. Practice on the basics. You know, no one cares about a lot of this stuff, but that's going to build you up. And then you're going to go into force analysis and momentum analysis and energy analysis, analysis of sound and light and rotations and all this. And this will have trained both your thinking and your problem solving. And by thinking, your visualization, your awareness, your understanding. It's going to be good. So, yes, I would say if you push yourself. Now, there, okay, I know there are times, like on an exams, but I'll even there, what I'll say is get your hand speed going. 
train this early, so keep track of this, and on, on an exam that's stressful, etc. if you do this, two things happen. The professor or whoever's grading it knows what you're talking about, which they're going to be very, very happy about, and you'll tend to be able to catch your mistakes or move forward. Um, so train it now with these exercises, and I do think that it will... Um, you're going to see as we go on to the next chapters, it's not like we're doing new things. So that's kind of a nice thing. Like in a textbook, you just go, let's do, let's do kinematics. And then you go to something else. And they kind of have to. But I'm breaking that mold here. We're training. This is huge. The next one, some of you have had some of this. Units converting units, what's a micro, what's a milli, what's a pico, and if you have it, what's a kilo, you remember this stuff, how do I convert units, and then thinking about how much. If I'm walking a meter a second, how much is it? So you want to start thinking. A meter per second is kind of like a eh, slow walk. One and a half meter per second is a regular kind of you're walking to get somewhere, but you're not rushing. Three meter per second, you're kind of jogging a little bit um, so you get a sense so we'll chapter two is about getting that sense chapter three then is looking at some ratios and putting this together putting some numbers in and graphing it chapter four is putting in algebra with subscripts so it starts getting ah this algebra there's all these letters and they're different letters and there's crazy letters and but it's okay because you know what they mean because they go back to the picture and chapter five is about bringing in trigonometry and doing two-dimensional stuff so you can break it into two one-dimensional problems and vectors. Oh my gosh, once you have vectors, you've got the main tools. And that depends on what you do, whether you do calculus or this or that. But those are the big barriers. So, so it's a yes and it is connected, you're going to reinforce it, going to the new topics, which still I'm gonna stick with time, change in time, or interval, instant interval, uh, position, displacement, velocity at an instant, acceleration often between two times, increasing speed, decreasing speed, average velocity, average speed are different, average acceleration. That's chapter three. So I think you'll, you'll, it's a little rough at the beginning and that's why I was, uh, I really wanted to meet with you guys because I feel like you're out there floating along. I, I tried everything to find time that we would all meet and it was just not happening. <laughs> so. Josh, can I ask you a quick question please. about acceleration? Um, so you're moving uh, left from one to two at 